Hi guys, it's Goffy here and today we've got another Fast Film Friday and in this video we're going to have a look at pushing and pulling film. So let's get five minutes on the clock and get started. So let's start off with what is pushing and pulling film. So pushing and pulling film is when you shoot at an ISO that is different to whatever it says on the box of your film. For example with Ilford HP5 that's a 400 ISO film so it's if you shot at say 800 or 200 ISO instead and we'll go through the reasons as to why you might want to do that and the pros and cons to both. Pushing and pulling film is more often done with black and white film as when it comes to colour, pushing and pulling film can cause the colours to change quite a lot. Sometimes these colour changes might be desirable but they change an awful lot based on what film you're shooting. So if you are going to do this with colour film, I'd have a good research into whatever film you're planning on doing this with just to see what the effect looks like. Some films, for example Cine Still, um, they actually advertise as a film that you can push. So there are some colour films out there that are designed to be pushed and pulled but the majority of them generally look their best at box speed. So at pushing and pulling pushing is by far the most common so pushing film is when you shoot at an ISO that is higher than the box speed so for example with HP5 you might shoot at say 800 and 1600 ISO rather than the 400 on the box now the main reason you do this is so that you can shoot at shutter speeds higher than you would have been able to previously so if you're shooting for example out with friends at a pub for example 400 ISO just might not be enough so you might need to boost up to 800 1600 ISO to better shoot at shutter speeds that you're able to handhold for example now to do this in camera or in your meter it really is as simple as changing your ISO to a speed that's higher than your film. Just remember how many stops higher you went because you'll need to tell your lab when you come to developing the film. So with the HP5 example, 400 is not pushed at 800 ISO has been pushed one stop, 1600 ISO has been pushed two stops and if you went all the way up to 3200 ISO then you're shooting three stops. Your lab just needs to know this because they need to change their developing times accordingly. Now the pros and cons of pushing film, so the pro is that you get to shoot at higher ISOs and therefore you get to shoot at higher shutter speeds which might mean you're able to capture images that you weren't able to capture at all previously. The downside with pushing film is you do increase contrast and you do increase grain. Something that's important to remember when pushing film is anything that wasn't captured on the negative can't be brought back by developing. So if you've shot something that is just too dark your negative will not have anything on it and if you develop for longer it's still not going to have anything on it. So that's something to be careful about and this is why it adds more contrast. If you imagine that you've got a piece of film and you've got some really bright highlights that gets lots of developer so your highlights become very bright. Your dark parts of your image where there just isn't any detail stay dark and because of that that is why you get your contrasty negatives. Another reason that people push film is literally for that reason. They like the creative side of it. They like to get more contrast, more grain. It gives images a bit more of a gritty sort of feel to them. Pulling film is the opposite to pushing film. So pulling film is if you shoot at a speed slower than the box speed. So keeping with the HP5 example, which is 400 ISO, this is if you shot at say 200, 100 or 50 ISO, you're pulling the film. And by doing this, what you're actually doing is overexposing the image. So you're overexposing the image and then in developing, you're actually developing for a shorter length of time to end up with the correctly exposed image. Now the main reason you want to pull a film is actually to reduce contrast. Now a good example of a scene where you might want to reduce contrast is a really bright harsh sunny day where you've got really hard shadows. The scene might just be too contrasty and maybe you want to capture it with slightly less contrast and the way you do that is by pulling your film. Oh I've got to quickly interrupt so editing Adam is here now not the Adam in the video so something that I've missed in the video is the fact that whatever you choose to do with pushing and pulling film you have to do this to the entire roll and that's because you get that roll as a whole developed either pushed or pulled so this isn't something you can do for a few images and then go back to normal on one roll of film whatever decision you make has to stay for that entire roll of film as you get that whole film developed in a different way when you send it to your lab that's it back to the video now another big reason that people push and pull film is if you forgot to change your meter settings. So say you had your roll of HP5 again, so it's 400 ISO, but you forgot to change your camera meter and you left it at 800 ISO because you were previously shooting say something like Cine Still. Now you might get to the end of the roll and think, oh, I've ruined it, but you haven't really, you've, all you've done really is pushed your film. So all you need to do is realize how many stops you've pushed Note that down and make sure you tell your lab when it comes to developing. So if you have shot film at the wrong ISO by accident, pushing and pulling can quite often save your roll of film and when you send it off to get it developed you can still get results that you're expecting. Now when it comes to sending your film to a lab, the most important thing is to label your film clearly. Lots of film canisters actually have on them um, little boxes that you can tick that say it's been pushed or pulled how many stops. From a cost point of view, pushing and pulling film, some labs charge a little bit extra. It's generally not that much but their development times do get 
exceptionally longer if you're starting to push two and three stops, so I wouldn't be surprised if the cost does go up slightly. They are genuinely spending a lot more time with your film. And stop the clocks! I think this is another video where I've cut back five minutes pretty close. I guess you guys will see on the screen. I don't know whilst I'm recording this. So I think that's enough for me talking now, so let's have a look at some examples. So the first up is a trip I took to Edinburgh where I pushed film. So this is Ilford HP5 that I've spoken about before in this video and I shot it at both 800 and 1600 ISO so these are two different rolls of film. You'll see from the images they are really quite contrasty and grainy and have a bit of a gritty feel to them and shooting at 800 ISO meant I was able to shoot outside because it was quite dark and overcast anyway so 800 ISO I was still able to shoot at sort of 500th of a second and then when it came to the evenings and we was inside I was still able to shoot the same roll of film um, just obviously at wider apertures and slightly slower speeds. And the second set of images were actually taken on my, I think they were taken on my Yashica map and they were shot on HP5 as well and I accidentally metered all of these images at 200 ISO so I didn't actually mean to and you can see from the images that they are lacking contrast um, and this can be a good thing like I said earlier you can get a little bit more range in your image and you can add contrast back in pretty easily in post anyway. If you've enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've got any questions about pushing and pulling film that I haven't covered in this video drop me a comment below and I'll try and get back to you and like I said before this little mini series the plan is to drop a video every Friday explaining some sort of aspect of film photography so there should be a good sort of eight episodes by the time we get to Christmas after Christmas we'll probably drop to one every couple weeks if there's any videos that you'd be interested to see in this series then please drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do thank you guys for watching and cheers